When we think about device access, right, it's really important to think about how you create the passwords and also using logout timers. Now, logout timers are important because sometimes you are on the console and you're configuring something and then a friend of yours asks you to take a look at something or maybe, hey, you want to grab a cup of coffee and you might forget to log out of the session. So with a logout timer, it does that automatically for you. Probably, I don't know, three to five minutes is good, you know, when you're troubleshooting what makes sense, but never more than five minutes. That, that would be my personal recommendation. So you never want to leave passwords in clear text in configuration files. Configuration files get sent around, sometimes to a vendor, and you want to make sure that your passwords and credentials are not going to somebody that's unauthorized, right? They shouldn't have visibility to that. So you want to make sure that you use features and functionalities in your routers that will encrypt your important passwords. In a Cisco router, this is a feature or functionality called service password encryption. That's the command that you use. Now, you want to make sure that you understand what kind of encryption is used because you want to make sure that it's not very easily reverse engineered. And Cisco has two ways of doing this. One is called the password command. So I can say username uh, medica password, and let's say I'll use let me in. Right? Then when I use the service password encryption command, that password let me in gets encrypted. However, the problem is that this is a Cisco proprietary encryption mechanism. It's only a bit shift. It's very easily reverse engineered. You should not use this. Much better is using the secret command because that is using cryptographic protection. So if I say username medica secret let me in, and I use the command service password encryption, in the configuration file, the string let me in will be garbled. It'll be an MD5 hash, and it cannot be decrypted. So the important part here is when you're using functionality that will encrypt your passwords in a configuration file, do understand how it is encrypted and make sure that it's not easily reverse engineered. You also want to authenticate individual users. This is important because of operational means. If you have group passwords, and let's say you have five or 10 people that have access to a device, if one person leaves, then you have to change the credential for everybody, right? Because it's a group password. Another issue is that if somebody had done something nefarious to the device, maybe they were angry at their boss, or you know, maybe they were asked to leave, but they still had access to the device, you don't necessarily have accountability of who did something or who did that damage. So having individual credentials is a much better practice. 